Ah, uh, there's a place in your house where it's cool to chill, get some me time, or even cook a meal. It's your kitchen, mofo. Ain't no time to slack, so just grab yourself a penny and let's work that ass. If you're scared of this place, ain't no need to bother. Just lay down your weapons and pick up another. Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to my virgin kitchen. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a pineapple and mango jam. Or if you're in America, uh, I'm going to make some pineapple mango jelly, because you guys call it jelly out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. The recipe ingredients are uh, if you hit pause on the video now and write them all down. So, 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 so simple. Basically, for pineapple and mango jelly slash jam, you need a pineapple and a mango. And to make jelly slash jam, you need a lot of sugar, my friends. That is 400 grams of sugar. Um, yeah, it's quite a lot. It just does look quite intimidating, but obviously you're not going to eat the whole jar, so you know, put it into proportion. There are ways of limiting it as well. And that's actual special jam sugar you can get, which has actually got a bit more pectin in it. But if you don't get hold of that, don't worry about it. You can still use granulated sugar. It's all good. And I've also got some lime juice. That's uh, just 80 mils of that there. And also an actual lime. I'm going to put a little bit of the zest in there to give it a bit of a... Ooh, a zing, you know what I'm saying? So let's get on, just do a little bit of prep on the mango and the pineapple, and we bring it all together. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab our mango and give it a nice darn peel, so get this hard, greeny, red skin off it, okay? And also that little stumpy bun, you might wanna slice that off, but just let's just go like this first of all. Oh my goodness, see that? Pull it right through like this. Look at that skin, off it comes. Oh yeah, baby. So work that all the way around your mango. Shave it, shave it. Okay, so with your mango peeled like so, you've got this funky mango pulpy thing here. It's all slippery and slimy. What you want to do is grab yourself a knife, like that, and uh, just slice little chunks off it. Okay, work it round. You want to get the same measurement of pineapple as you do mango. So around about 200 grams is what I'm going for. Yeah. Okay, my friends, 200 grams of chopped pineapple there. I was just hacking away with it with my knife. Yeah. And there's a teeny weeny bit left that I put in the fridge for another day. I don't know why I told you that, but just go with it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the pineapple. Um, pineapple head. Yeah, man, I feel like I'm in Jamaica. Uh, yeah, pineapple. I'm just going to top and tail it. Chuck it up. 200 grams of that as well. Let me show you how we do that. Okay, so I've still got my mango skin there. Don't worry about it. It's all good. I'm just going to slice off the top of my pineapple like that. You like that? And now the bottom, like so, straight through. And then what we do is slice downwards and just take off that outer ring, the nasty stuff, because you don't want to eat that. That doesn't taste good. Okay, so work my knife all the way around the edge of that to get that nasty, well, it's almost like crocodile skin. I feel like Steve Irwin. Oh, crikey, danger, that's crocodile. Uh, yeah, sorry. So what I'm gonna do is a nasty stumpy core there, but first of all, we'll get our knife and cut straight down through it like that. Cha-ching. So we've got two pieces, and then halve it again. As you can see, I wasn't perfect with getting that off, so you can actually just trim off little bits like there. I'll do that in a minute, otherwise I'll cut my finger off. But yeah, just teeny little bits like that if there's any green bits still left on there. And then you can just gradually get off slices of pineapple that you want. Okay, folks, so in the pineapple quarters, you've got this nasty, rocky, stumpy bit still. So unless you've got one of those pineapple core things where you can sort of slice it all out, it's not going to work. So the best way to do is to just cut down and down and then in and then... Out it comes, like so, so you don't want to eat that bit either, it's going to be nasty. Ah, yeah, don't, don't go there. So this bit here, it's all nice pineapple bits, so you can like halve it again, and then maybe just sort of slice it downwards like this. So you've got some nice big pineapple chunks, and you can halve them like that, and that'll do. So get it as chunky or as thin as you like. Right here, here is where I get a little bit lazy. I've got something called a mini chopper here, which is basically a blender and does sound quite rude, so we will move on. I've got my pineapple here and my mango. So I've got my chunks of pineapple and mango. There we go, all good. Yellow, yellow fest. And what I was saying a minute ago about the pineapple chunks, the size is up to you. We're gonna run the ma mango and pineapple through that together and it's gonna sort of blend it up, okay? So you're gonna get it all nice and fine. Well, the longer you leave it in there, the finer your jam slash jelly will be. But if your pineapple chunks are thicker, it's gonna take a little bit longer for it to hack it down. So you have a chunkier jam. So that, my friends, is up to you. Let's get some stuff in there. Yeah. Okay, so I've plonked my first batch of pineapple and mango in there. I'm gonna probably do this about four times because of the size of this chopper. So we just slide that in there like so and go. That is what I am looking for, my friends. Not too much of a blast in there. That's probably just under 10 seconds, actually. Here we go. So it's still in there, nice and chunky. Obviously, the more you run it through, as I say, it's going to be a nice, fine jam. But I like a little bit of texture. Yeah. Okay, folks, so once you've finished running it all through your chopper, or if you're absolutely hardcore and you're doing it with a knife, I like put it there for a few hours, but I, I, I salute you. That's amazing. Are you left with this funky, sort of rugged pulp? I like it. It's all good, like this. So what I'm going to do, have a little taste for you right now. 
The mango and the pineapple on its own is incredible. I have a real perfect summer snack. Mm. That's good. I could just eat that right now. But anyhow, oh, the spoon. I won't buy this spoon, actually, you'll see. There's this excess juice. Now what I'm gonna do in a minute is run that through a sieve. I don't wanna show you that step because it's kind of boring. We're just gonna put it through a sieve so we're just left with the mango and pineapple pieces. So we'll plonk it in a saucepan for a couple of minutes just to start to cook it through a teeny bit, soften it up initially, not too long on its own, otherwise it'll start to scorch. And we'll chuck all our other ingredients in. Let's do that right now. Okay, doke, so this saucepan is on a very low flame. You can probably hardly even see that. You don't want it to turn it up too hard yet. That is our pulp that has been run through the sieve. It's still a little bit of moisture there. Just chuck that in there. Oh my goodness. So as you can see, it's starting to cook right away. So keep stirring, literally only for a couple of minutes, just to get it in there, begin that softening process. Oh yeah. Okay, so that has actually only been in there for about three minutes. So what I'm gonna do is pour in our sugar. I'm only gonna put in the half of it initially, okay? Because I wanna see if we can try and cut it down a little bit. I want it to still be sweet, but not overly sweet. Yeah, that's 400 grams of sugar there. That is a lot, my friends. In goes our lime juice as well, like so. Oh yeah, and not forgetting our lime zest, which is on this plate here. A little bit of that, let's just brush that in. And what I'll do is give it a nice little complimentary little squeeze of one of our lime juice halves, like so. Oh yes, that is really gonna give it a zing. Stir this through, and in a minute we'll crank it right up to a massive boil. Right here then guys, so I added another 100 grams of sugar, meaning I've added 300 grams in total rather than the 400. So I'm feeling pretty darn good about myself. Chiching. So it's in this saucepan like so, it's all mixed together, kind of like a mixture in a cauldron. You can imagine a witch going, -ha 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 -ha. yeah? Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, crank the heat right up. Can you see that flame? Oh yeah. We're gonna rapid boil it, we're gonna get it nice and bubbling. In fact, look, it started already. Look at that, just, just keep it, just give it a little stir a minute like that. We wanna get it up nice and boiling, and it's gonna do its thing. It's there, we just let it boil now. We've done our hard work. Let the cooker do the rest. Okay, it's so about 10 minutes into it bubbling away. Check that out. What you'll see is you get this foamy layer, but if you stir it underneath, the jam is in there all still cooking away. You wanna keep bubbling for at least 20 minutes so it all thickens up, and then we just pour it into our pot and let it cool down, baby. So just keep going, just keep stirring it from time to time. Okay, doke, it's actually been 24 minutes, okay, and I'm taking it off the heat, and it's just still piping hot, so be very, very careful, but you can see how thick it's gone. I had a cheeky little taste as well. Oh my goodness, it's good. So what I'm gonna do, let it cool down a teeny little bit longer, and then plonk it into this little jam jar that I've got. But you know, you don't have to use a jam jar, you can use a little plastic tub, put some cling film on it, but it's old school to have a jam jar. Everyone's got a jam jar, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure if this jam jar is gonna to be too big or too small, but I'm gonna to start to pour this in now. Oh my goodness. In that goes like that. It's just filling it up. It just ooze, you just wanna jump in it and swim in there. I think this is gonna be the right size. All good, my friends. So what I've gotta do now is let that sit, chill, do its thing, and then let it get the room temperature at first, which might take half an hour in itself, and then plonk it in the fridge for about an hour and a half at the very, very least. And then I'll show you two ways to eat it, baby. Yeah. Right here then guys, that has been three hours and the first half an hour it poured the mixture, as you saw, into the glass container and my friends, when it goes in there, bow, it is hot. So let it go to room temperature and then after that put it in the fridge for at least an hour minimum. I've done it quite chunky, it's almost like a funky marmalade texture in there, it's all good. So here is two serving suggestions. Hello. Hello. Do you want to show me what you got? Ice cream. Your ice cream. That is an ice and cream my cone texture. with the jam on there. Oh, and your utility belt as well. Okay. Uh, so yeah, ice cream with that on there, or you could grill up some chicken with a bamboo skewer or even a Dad. cocktail stick. Shove it on there. I got my that, my fork. Okay, she's showing you that. I'll just show you this. And my whistle, pink whistle in it. Here we go. Also my. Amazing, mate. Have some of the ice cream. I can't tell you how sort of tropical that chicken tastes when you bite into it with that pineapple scent in it. It's like, you are in Jamaica, man. It is amazing. Look at that big chicken. Oh, it's massive, isn't it? Now, right, take a bite out of that ice cream. Tell us what you think, mate. Oh, <laughs> your face was like, do you like it? Yes or no? Yes. What does it taste like? Pickle. Pickle? Tastes like pickle. Um, you like it? <coughs> yeah, give me some skin. Sure? Yeah. You sure? She was still making these faces. It is really, really good. So if I can make that, absolutely anyone in the world can. Have a go for yourself. Let me know how you get on. I'll see you again. Next time. Next time. Cheers, mate.
Yeah.